The Accelerator Podcast is here. I'm your host on tap, Monty King, inviting you to leave ordinary in the dust. Every next level of our lives demands a better version of ourselves. Our guests will inspire you to close the gap. What doesn't happen by design happens by default, so the content on tap is created for listeners to learn and grow. Visit us online at whatsontap.tv or find us on your favorite podcast platform. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, tap five stars and drop us a review. Hit the notification bell to never miss an episode and share your favorites to help others outrun the status quo. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Accelerator Podcast. Thank everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, today, we're going to be talking about factoring. Uh, and cash is king in any business, but especially for transportation. And business expenses don't wait 30, 60, or 90 days for you to get paid before they want their money, right? So when cash flow gets tight, what do you do? Um, well, my friends over at JD Factors provide non recourse factoring to turn your unpaid invoices into immediate cash that you need without credit risk or debt. And today I've got Daniel Tobler from JD Factors uh, joining us, and he's going to give us more insight on cash flow, how to manage it, how to be better prepared, and make sure that um, you know your funds don't get the life choked out of them. So, uh, Daniel, welcome to Tap. Thank you for joining us today. No, oh, it's a privilege to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Awesome. Um, yeah, let's just dive right in. Um, first, give me a little bit of a backstory on your uh, your your experience from a factoring perspective, transportation uh, as a niche, et cetera, if you don't mind. Tell us how yeah, you got absolutely. to where you are today. Yeah, so I've been in the, the factoring arena since 1998, so I'm, I'm aging uh, in the process there, but uh, in a variety of different roles. Uh, first, just kind of as a, an office worker for a factoring company while I was going to school at uh, Georgia State uh, in downtown Atlanta and uh, did that for you know several years. And then at some point thought, uh, 2007, I thought, hey, I should do this for myself. And so kind of had that, that uh, capital venture bug, so to speak, and decided to, to come back to East Tennessee and start my own uh, factoring program, uh, very small. And it was focused primarily on small trucking companies. And so in doing that, I wore many hats uh, obviously from the business development side of things, uh, which is what I am currently with JD Factors, um, finding finding new business, seeking opportunities, but also handled the, the back office, the general ledger, uh, customer service, so a little bit of everything. And I think that gave me the opportunity to better understand uh, the whole, whole side of things is what it takes to run a business, both because I was running my own and then helping small companies understand some some pitfalls and some opportunities and how they might capitalize on them. I uh, did that for a while. Of course, the banking world uh, kind of changed at some point in time, and uh, it made sense for me to, to kind of find what niche worked best for me, and I love the business development side. And so I've been with JD Factors for uh, over 10 years now. It's been a, a perfect marriage, so to speak. I just love working with, with the team here. Uh, we too still focus on transportation. It's probably well over 90% of our clients are in the transportation space. And that covers uh, auto hauling, intermodal, flatbed, dry van, uh, freight brokering, uh, everything. And I focus mostly in the Southeast, but we've got business development officers throughout the U.S. and Canada. And uh, it's just been a, a great privilege to work with them. Awesome. Awesome. Well, do me a favor for our listeners who may not be aware or know what factoring is or means. Give us a broad overview of, of factoring and how uh, it can be used to for businesses. Yeah, great question. Uh, so really factoring is the, the selling of your accounts receivable or your invoices. So it's very common for not only truckers or trucking companies, but for a variety of businesses, business services, oil and gas, manufacturing to produce a, a great service or a great product. They do everything on their end correctly. They, they invoice their customers. But now at this point, they really lose a lot of control because they're now waiting for their customers to pay that invoice. The terms may be such that they can work within those terms, but it's very common for customers to press those terms, push those terms out a little bit. 
net 30 can very quickly turn into 45, 50 days and, and really causes a lot of uh, cash flow gaps that can cause a great deal of strain on a business. So what factoring does is allow you to focus on doing what you do best, whether that's delivering freight, brokering freight, or, or whatever the case may be, complete your task, complete your expertise, submit that invoice, that paperwork over to a factoring company, and now you're getting paid in 24 to 48 hours. So it makes your cash flow predictable. It makes it uh, very manageable. It kind of takes a lot of the, the guesswork out of it. And it can, you also get a lot of additional services associated with that because you have a, a back office that's helping with invoicing, helping with collecting. In our case, we provide a, a non-recourse opportunity where they're, they're protected against a nightmare scenario where a customer goes bankrupt. And so it really allows them to focus on what they do best um, and, and allow us to help them with their cash flow. Awesome. So, so talk about the non-recourse, um, if you don't mind. Just peel that layer back a little bit more and, and explain what that means. Yeah, so non-recourse is basically where a factoring company is taking on the credit risk. So when we evaluate your customers, uh, we look at several different databases. We look at our own internal uh, hit payment history with them and determine if we can offer a credit guarantee, um, which is by far the, the significant majority of what's submitted to us. And really what we're saying is, is if you do your job correctly, you deliver the freight, you provide the proper paperwork, there are offsets or things uh, <clears throat> in that realm, strictly uh, you do your job correctly. And then if a nightmare scenario takes place, uh, they go bankrupt, they become insolvent. We're covering that risk. You're not having to pay us back the money that we funded to you. So it really takes an enormous uh, strain and enormous concern off of our customers' uh, plate, so to speak, because they know once they submit it, if they've done their job right, there is no worry of a payment not coming in because if a payment doesn't come in credit related, well, JD Factors is covering that. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a significant value add for sure. Is that unique to JD Factors from your understanding? Or? There are other non-recourse factors out there, but by far the majority are, are recourse. And basically that means that there's typically a chargeback date, whether that's 60 days, 90 days, what have you, but a, a predetermined date where if an invoice doesn't pay, basically the company has to buy that invoice back from the factoring company. That can typically be subbed out with factoring another invoice, but at the same time that may create a scenario where a reserve is held back. So they may not be getting the full uh, cash advance on their invoice because a certain amount is held back to cover those scenarios. So with non-recourse factoring, very common to get the full advance, of course, minus the fee and really just allow you to focus on, on finding freight and, and doing the, you know, doing what you do best. Got it. So let's talk about the, the accounts. Do you have to, when you factor for someone, do you have to factor their entire <laughs> book of receivables or all their customers, or what does that look like? Can you uh, do it a la carte? Um, tell me more about that. Yeah, so with JD Factors, our clients are able to pick and choose which customers they want to factor. And that provides a great deal of flexibility. For instance, let's say a trucking company has uh, a local customer that they deal with, maybe somebody that they have a great relationship with and they can pick up their check every Friday. Well, they may not want to factor that invoice. They may want to simply bill them directly and collect their payment every Friday. And it really provides them freedom to, to manage their, their accounts. And that's really all we're wanting to do is provide them another tool where they can help get, receive help with their cash flow. But we're not wanting to manage their business. Uh, there, there probably are several factoring companies out there that require their customers to factor everything. Uh, we don't want to handcuff or control that in any way. So um, several years ago, I had a customer that uh, a client I brought on, he had a whole slew of customers, but there was just one that he wanted to factor, just one customer. They factored with us for, if my memory serves me right, seven to nine months. It wasn't a great length of time. And the reason they factored with us is simply the non-recourse component. They wanted that credit guarantee. They wanted to know that, uh, you know, when they submit it, they don't have to worry about it because they get, got some reports of checks being in the mail, not arriving, and it really caused a great deal of stress and concern for them. 
So while the cash flow was nice, they got paid quicker. They were really seeking that that credit guarantee, and so we factored them for like I said, seven to nine months, if my memory serves me correctly. Just one customer. We never saw invoices for the other customers, and once the debtor or their customer uh, began to to pay timely, that the checks were truly in the mail, then all of a sudden they they basically said, "Hey, Daniel, no, we don't need you anymore," and appreciate it, and we we're able to end the the relationship. And so it worked for both parties. So yes, we want our, our clients to have full visibility, which they get through our online uh, their online portal, and then just full flexibility to pick and choose which customers they want to factor. Awesome. So what what um, caused you to focus on transportation companies? That's a great question. It's you know in factoring, there's uh, every factor kind of has their own little niche. Um, I got a, a lead just uh, two days ago. Uh, or I guess it's today, Tuesday, I guess it was Monday and the days are squeezing together, but got one yesterday that was a construction uh, related deal. Uh, and it has some components that typically JD factors doesn't spend a lot of time in the construction space. Um, but transportation is probably one of the most, the industries that utilizes factoring, uh, the most, I think it's because of, uh, the, the terms themselves. It was for the need of fuel repairs, and opportunities for growth. Uh, factoring is a great tool for companies that are struggling with cash flow, but also who really want to, to operate and, and grow their business. And as you want to add on trucking companies, you want, or I mean, excuse me, add on trucks, grow your fleet. Factoring gives you the flexibility to do that quickly without having to rely upon, you know, getting bank loans and, and that kind of process. And so it's a niche that we feel like we can service well. Uh, and we've been doing this for well over 30 years. And so it's just been a, a good space for us. How about um, freight brokers? Uh, do you see or do you have any clients that are just non-asset based freight brokers? We do. We've got a great program for freight brokers. Um, we do, and it's a standard requirement in factoring in general, that the factory company typically makes the payments on behalf of the freight broker to the carrier. And so we've got a great program that allows our, our freight brokers to do just that focus on finding good shippers, focus on building relationships with carriers. And then once they submit all the, the paperwork to us, we carve out the portion owed to the carrier. We make that payment on behalf of the freight broker and it's one less thing on their table. So yeah, it's a great product. A lot of people take advantage of it. You know, a lot of times freight brokers that are starting out, it may be a struggle uh, to build those relationships. And so, you know, we, we frequently sign on freight brokers that unfortunately aren't able to get that uh, to that point where they're actually building their relationships and invoicing, but we're very patient in that process. There's no application fee. There's no monthly minimum they have to hit. So we're not in any way causing an expense to that freight broker as they're trying to get up off the ground. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so what are some, you know, we, we've actually thrown out a lot of different things or reasons why someone would, want to consider factoring what what have we not discussed that you think is is something that should be pointed out just in case we have some listeners that uh, might be in a, a different uh, they may not be starting up and they may not have a lot of um, you know 90 day receivables out there or 60 days whatever it is what other are, are other reasons why someone might need to give you a call uh, one I don't think we've touched upon is uh, a trucking company that maybe has one or two trucks and the owner may be a driver. He may be dispatching. He may be on the road constantly. And just the sheer struggle to handle the back office is a burden. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe he's handling it from a cash flow perspective, but now he's spending his weekends invoicing when he could be spending time with his family. And for just such a small, you know, percentage there, he can really take that entire component out and really it's it's in a way kind of like adding on a an office manager or somebody to help with that side of things and and i think sometimes our smaller trucking companies fail to to recognize that there is a significant value to having somebody invoice for you do you do your collections make sure your credit side of things from your customer perspective is taken care of and allow you focus on not only finding good relationships but maybe improving relationships Maybe you could not have to, to hustle so much to, to take whatever is right there before you, but try to branch out and improve that to get find relationships where you can maybe get to pay to, you know, greater, greater rate per mile or, you know, some, some type of thing. So 
it really can be just from a time perspective, um, a great opportunity uh, to have somebody that can handle some of that. And while they're in the office, you know, eight to five, Monday through Friday, and then you have online access 24 seven, you can simply shoot a quick email of that documentation and that's all you have to worry about. Our system will, will actually create the invoices on your behalf and, and provide a great deal of help on that side of it. And I think sometimes people don't realize that, that additional value. Yeah, it's uh, anytime you can give someone back time, how do you put a number on that, right? That's right. It's, it's finite, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, any any other items or anything we might be missing or we haven't discussed um, that you can offer or, or services you provide? I think one thing that, while it's not a service that is billable or anything like that, is simply just reaching out to me. Or you know, shooting me an email, say, "Hey, can I just talk to you, Daniel? Let me let me just tell you a little bit about my business. What are some things that, while I'm not a, a consultant, I'm not billing or anything, I've had a lot of experience in this industry. You can share some things that they may want to to consider. Um, obviously, networking. I, I talk with a lot of people in a lot of different sectors that relate to transportation that may be able to to help them out and say, "Hey, I'm struggling with, you know, insurance. Hey, why don't you give you know Monty a call or." Uh, I need some equipment. You know, somebody can help with that. So because I ran my own business, I recognize the, some of that. I can understand where they're coming from their side of things and I'm happy just to you know, say, hey, you know, you're a construction company. We don't do that. But, hey, I know some people that could really help you out and you may want to consider that. So um, I just want to help them succeed, help them operate and grow. And JD Factors has an outstanding product. We have outstanding service and really want to just help people succeed. Well, that's where I wanted to go next. Do you have any um, success stories that you could tell us about uh, where where you've you've helped either the small business owner or you know, tough collection, whatever it may be? Yeah, you know, no, there's, yeah, there's so many. And it's interesting because everybody that come, has their own business, they have a different end game or a different dream. You know, you have some that have there's one truck. That's all they want to ever be, which is great. They just want they don't want to bring on additional trucks and and you know, bring on additional drivers and we can tailor a program to fit their needs. Um, but about, I guess it was 2014 brought on a, a small trucking company. I can't remember if it was one or two trucks. Uh, he's been with us this whole time. And uh, I think he's up to nearly 40 trucks at this point and just doing a, you know, he's also branched off in another side of, of transportation. And we just did not only developed a, a working relationship. We've developed a friendship there. So, there's all kinds of success stories. Um, and then there's times where not commonly in trucking, but I've had bankers that'll reach out to me and say, Hey, I banked this guy for so long and we've loaned him on his machinery and we've loaned him on his building and he's really no longer bankable for this product. Is there any way we can carve out and you can help him with his receivables? And we do that as well. And then the opposite. Sometimes we'll work with somebody for a while and they'll become truly quote unquote bankable and can get a bank line of credit and that's now the better fit for them. So again, the success stories range, a success story for somebody is, Hey, I ran my trucking company, just me and my truck for 30 years and it's worked great. And I don't have to worry about invoicing because the JD factors team takes care of that. That's a success story as are those who are really take off and grow. So it's, it's fun to watch each story play out. Awesome. Daniel, tell everyone how they can get in touch with you for questions or to further the conversation. If someone has, like you mentioned there, they want to let you know about their situation to see if you've got any guidance that you could offer. Yeah. Well, certainly you can check us out on our website, www.jdfactors.com. Uh, you can email me directly at dtobler at jdfactors.com. All my contact information is on the website. So, would love to have you call me as well. Um, my office is my cell phone. So, I mean, even if it's in the evening, shoot me a text or a call and say, hey, can we speak? And we can easily set something up. And again, I'm not really one to, I'm not a pressure type of sales uh, salesman, so to speak. I just want to learn your story, see how we can help. And and uh, we may be, may, even if we're not the best fit, maybe your construction, happy to point you in the right direction. But yeah, those are the best ways to reach me. Would love to love to talk with anybody who has questions or interest. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're entering into a section of the show that I call the Tap Five, and this okay. is where I ask you five questions. And, I'm not and the timer, you, 
no, no time. Okay. Uh, but you know, if, in one word or one sentence, or you know, maybe a few sentences, uh, just uh, respond accordingly. Uh, and this is completely impromptu, so okay. there's no wrong or right answer. Uh, but <laughs> it's just uh, a couple of questions I, I like to ask all all of our guests. So, the first one is, what is the worst financial advice that you've ever received? Hmm. These, these truly are impromptu. <laughs> what is the worst financial advice I've ever received? Oh, man, it's probably a good thing that nothing's coming to mind. I don't have a nightmare uh, scenario, right? Nothing, um, no financial bad bot, no, no bad advice financially. Yeah, nothing that's really hit me. Um, I have lessons that I've learned, but it wasn't based on advice. Uh, for instance, um, when I had my own factoring company uh, years ago, very small, uh, I would have probably branched out and, and got multiple investors instead of just one primary. I realized now that uh, in a way I handcuffed myself just a little bit. So probably being a little bit more proactive uh, as far as seeking opportunities, discovery, but it wasn't that I got advice that necessarily was the, the worst one. Um, I have heard people get advice to, to stay a, a sole proprietor when they it probably was a better idea to form an LLC. I've heard that advice given and seeing people struggle based on that decision. But again, I'm not advising one way or the other, but I have heard that. That's probably more than two or three sentences. <laughs> no, that, that's good actually. And I was just gonna ask you, can you expand on the sole proprietor versus LLC and, and just your opinion, why one or the other? Yeah, so as it relates for, for our business, uh, oftentimes we won't bring on a sole proprietor or a partner. Um, one of that, one reason is the, the difficulty with the UCC searches, they're a little bit more complicated, but also the, the added risk that typically comes to the, to the sole proprietor in the event that a, a truck, uh, you know, gets in a massive car wreck, it, it can create uh, added risk there. So I think having that limited uh, liability that comes with that is oftentimes the better, better route. And at least for us, uh, typically we'll shy away from sole proprietors or partnerships. Okay. All right, so question number two, what is the best financial advice that you've ever been given? I would say to start investing for retirement or future when I'm young. I think a mm -hmm. lot of times people wait a long time thinking I got plenty of time for that. And if you can start uh, putting money away and applying it properly early on and get those returns to, you know, steamroll, that's a, a great thing. Good. Um, all right. So. Last one about advice, but what would, what advice would you give your teenage self? Oh, my teenage self. Yeah. If you um, could go back to your teenage self, what would you tell yourself? I would probably tell myself not to be so hard on myself. I, I'm typically, I, I have a little bit of obsessive compulsive disorder. I'm pretty, set a pretty high standard on myself. Um, and I think if I could look back and, and at certain times been a little bit easier on myself, it would have paid dividends. Probably have a little mm -hmm. bit more hair on my head and things like that. But that's probably what I would tell myself. Yeah, that's probably what I'd tell myself. All right. So this next question, this is where we get a little tricky, okay? Okay. What is the best college in the state of Georgia? <laughs> As a graduate of Georgia State, I'm going to say go Panthers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I'll just curious if you had any neighbors or anything that you thought really highly of, but maybe. Not. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm here in Knoxville, so my, my blood runs orange for the balls. But uh, yeah, I graduated from Georgia State and it was a great, great school. Awesome. What made you go to Georgia State? Because uh, you're from East Tennessee, right? I'm from East Tennessee, but at the time I was living in uh, Noonan, uh, Sharpsburg area. And yep. so it was a, a great option, relatively close. I still could work because I was you know, working in the factoring industry uh, in the office and they have a, a great business school. And so it was just a good fit for me. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So number five. Okay. Who is the greatest professional wrestler of all time? <laughs> well, I'll date myself and have to say Hulk Hogan when he, uh, you know, took out Andre the Giant when I was 10 or whatever. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be upset with that. That was a, a, an amazing moment for sure. So <laughs> I, I should have picked you for a Hulkamaniac. Uh, yeah, yeah, do some of this here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, your best Hulk Hogan impression? Yeah, you just had it. Oh, you, I, yeah. it? Uh, what was his phrase? 
brother. He said brother in a deep voice all the time. Listen up, brother. Oh, yeah. Say your prayers, eat your vitamins. All that. That's right. I forgot that. That's right. <laughs> been the awesome. best advice for me as a kid, right? Teach your vitamins. <laughs> yeah. uh, Daniel, I've definitely enjoyed our time. I hope that you come back and see us. Uh, and um, if there's anything that you need, let me know. Uh, it's, it's definitely been a pleasure. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon. No, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes, sir.